Alright, so this is the clutch I'm going to be using. Here is the part number. Uh, I ordered this from Rock Auto. Uh, the clutch can, comes with the clutch disc, the friction pad, and the uh, master that goes in the transmission, the part that you need to bolt in. Uh, this particular kit did not come with a tool, so I had to hit a local parts store. They didn't have the tool, so I had to rent this universal tool. Um, it's only 20 bucks. Um, if you keep it, if you turn it back, you get your 20 bucks back, so not too bad. Um, and this is a metal one, not like the plastic ones that usually come in these kits. Um, I've got hundreds of the plastic ones, but of course, they're for American or Japanese cars. Um, none of them actually really fit very well in this clutch disc. So, the other thing I ordered was the part. Um, this came separately. I ordered this off eBay. It was forty-seven dollars. Um, this is the part that connects to your clutch pedal inside. This is the part that connects to your brake master, and this is the part that actually feeds that clutch cylinder. Um, I figured since this car has 122, 23,000 miles on it, um, it was probably better just to replace all of the system. Um, the flywheel looks good. There's no grooves, no burning. Um, so um, the springs still feel good inside there. It's got that little uh, cushion built into it. So uh, if you can save yourself 600 bucks, you can save yourself 600 bucks. Um, so yeah, so with everything, um, so $300 or just under $300 for the clutch, $47 shipped for the pedal portion, and uh, another $40 for brake fluid. I'm using uh, high temp um, brake fluid in the system because if I decide to take this car to the track like I do my orange one, I want the high temp brake fluid. You could probably get brake fluid for about half that. Um, so yeah, so next thing is we're going to get the clutch and the disc out of the box and into the car. All right, so I just pulled out the three 12 mils that hold the slave in. I have the new one here. These were red Loctite, it looks like. So we'll be using red Loctite when we put it back together and torquing them to the correct specs. But now we're going to slide the old one out so we can slide the new one in. All right, now that we got that out of the way, I went ahead and cleaned that up. Oh, I got a little bit of dirt still there. So yeah, finished cleaning that all out, get all that crap out of there, and it's pretty good. So, all right, now to throw the new one in and uh, go hunt down some red Loctite. Okay, so got the new slave cylinder in, or now um, put some red Loctite on these, and now the next step is to torque them to 20 foot-pounds per the manual. All right, back in a minute. Okay, so next, what the plan is, is to put the new clutch disc and everything in, and get all torqued down. Um, the manual shows 15.9 pounds. Okay, so this kit that I have, here it is. Um, so it comes with a center shaft, and it comes with these bushing adapters for the center, the pilot hole. And you just have to find the right one that fits the snuggest. This happens to be the one for mine. These two pieces screw together. Like so. Okay, and now that stays in there pretty solid. Now the next part is to figure out um, which end of this guy to use. And uh, most likely we're going to use the tapered side. So we'll put the clutch disc up and then this will go over the top. It's a little hard for me to do, so let me see if I can set the camera. I'll be right back. All right. Now the next up is the clutch and um, if you read this it says gearbox side so that means that side goes towards the transmission and the pointy side goes towards the motor so what we're going to do is we 
we want to slide that on there like so. Slide that on there like so. And then we're just going to kind of get it to sit in the middle. So even though the, these clutches come wrapped in this paper, just wiping it down with some brick clean, there's still some oil on there. So you can see the black, a little bit of black here. So always a good idea to wipe those down real good before installing them. Okay, so I, all I did was make sure you line these pins up and it will sort of hold it in place. Not too much, I wouldn't really trust it. Uh, but then I just put the bolts in um, and I just kind to kind of ran them in with a extension just I turned used it as kind of a screwdriver until they were just snug starting to snug and this will still allow you I don't know if you can see that but that will still allow you to make sure that the clutch is nice and centered what you want to do is push on the center shaft get that cone and that will center it before you start snugging those down the rest of the way um, so that's what I'm going to do next. I'm just going to snug them down a little bit and then I will come back and torque it. Okay, so what I did was I just kind of did a star pattern with the six bolts here and I just did about three turns and then jumped to the next one, three turns, and I just slowly sank that on. Uh, it's fully flush now. Uh, but they are just snug, which means that as soon as that bottomed out, as soon as there was a, any amount of feedback, I stopped. This is the clutch is in there, so we can just go ahead and pull that out. We're done. Um, clutch should be lined up, so that's a good thing. Uh, so the next thing to do is we're going to torque these. Now the motor is going to want to turn on you, so you're going to have to figure out how to hold it. Uh, having a second set of hands would be awesome. I don't currently have a second set of hands, so I'm going to um, figure out a way to keep the motor from turning, and uh, I may use a pry bar. All right, so what I did, I just took my long uh, pry bar and just put it on the teeth. So I'm trying to use the torque wrench and it literally works really well. The motor, it's only 16 pounds so you're not really having to worry about it moving around too much. Um, so my torque wrench does not give me um, ones. So I'm just setting mine at 15. Uh, this is a snap-on torque wrench that I've had for 30 years. So I'm sure the newer ones are much better. Um, but so yeah, alright, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to go in a star pattern and torque these all down. So, back in a minute. And just like that, it is completely torqued down. We can remove our pry bar. <clears throat> pry bar did, does no damage. Just don't get carried away. And uh, so, next is dragging the transmission back under here and getting it back up in place. All right, so now the trick will be to get the transmission back into the car and up without it falling off the jack. There's no, I have a transmission jack head for my jack, but with the jack stand there, I don't have enough room to use it. Um, it just is in the way. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just balance it on the head of the jack with one hand and jack it up with the other and hope everything goes well. Um, if I had some straps, I could just strap it so it didn't rock around so much. Um, I blew it off this morning with some compressed air just to get all the loose dirt and gravel that was at the top that picked up over the years. Um, as you can see, the inside's nice and clean today. Uh, we got all that old crap out. The clutch is in, torqued, and the only other thing we have left to do is put in the new crush washers for the drain plug and the fill plug. Um, we'll do the drain plug first and then we'll do the fill plug once we get this back on the ground so we can put the low, uh, put the fluid back in it. So, alright, so the next thing will be me cussing, swearing, and forcing this thing in. Hopefully it goes in smoothly. Uh, the transmission itself isn't very heavy. I, I'm going to say it's probably between 60 and 70 pounds. Um, I was able to pick it up 
fairly easy. Regretfully, with my bad shoulder, I'm working above my head here a little bit. Um, I don't have a whole lot of strength, so we'll see how this goes. All right. As you can see, we are closing the gap here. I've been able to get it this far, and now my jack doesn't seem to go as high as it did yesterday to get it out. Um, so, what I think I'm going to do is find another jack to support the weight of the transmission so I can lower my big jack down just a little bit so I can put a piece of plywood underneath it that I have here that should give me the extra inch I need to put this back. Um, so that's what I'm going to try. Okay, so I couldn't find a jack that was going to work so what I did was took a piece of uh, 2x4 steel I had a piece of wood would work too I just didn't have any laid down some towels here just to keep it from damaging anything and a ratchet strap around the transmission and I'm able to take all the weight off of the jack which will allow me to put the spacer in but this will also allow me to manage the tail end of this while I push the transmission back in and just by putting that little bit of tension on it it almost lines up so it shouldn't take too much more all right back in a second okay so what I ended up doing was using the strap I just lifted this end put the jack towards the front um, might be hard to see but I've got two of the bolts in so transmissions in I just need to get a couple in the top that way all the weights not supported on these two where they're uh, having the most leverage we'll put that top ones in and that will solve all that and then we'll go ahead and finish buttoning it up so back in a bit okay so I have the two upper transmission bolts in not the starter one not the black one but the two silver ones are in and snug down so the next thing I'm going to do is put the transmission mount back in so I can get this bar out of the way and finish putting all the bolts in this way I don't have to worry about the jack being kicked out yeah, or the jack stand moving we'll just safe than sorry the more we can get bolted back secure the better so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get those get the bracket which is right here I'll get that bolted back on and then we'll run the two bolts through the other part and then I can get rid of all this stuff so back in a second all right so I got the second half of the mount in and the bolt snugged once I get everything bolted down I will go ahead and torque it back in so next thing I need to do I need to bring the back of the transmission up about two inches and then I can put those bolts in so let's get on that okay so um, as you can see transmission is being supported by the mount and the bolts so we don't need anything underneath there anymore um, so just a real quick in case you make this mistake your transmission bolts are going to be two different sizes so the long ones go here where the stumps are and the shorter ones go here 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 and then the long ones the one on the top on that side that's your starter bolt that one will have to go in we'll have to get the push the starter up and get that started um, and that starter bolt are these black ones so there's two of these one for the top one for the bottom so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get these snugged all the way down and then torque them into place. I'll have to look that spec up, um, but if I remember correctly, they're usually about 50 pounds-ish. Um, it is a 14 mil, so 50 pounds would be fairly close. So, all right. All right. So the torque says 39 pounds. So 40 pounds is what we're going to torque those bell housing bolts down to. We'll do all the ones down here on the bottom first. Then we'll go up on top and get those last ones up there. And then we will start reassembling things. All right. So all the bolts are in and torqued to 40 pounds. Starter bolts are back in and torqued to 40 pounds. Um, that took a little bit of fiddling. I had to adjust the starter a few times, get this bottom one started, then I could finish the top. Uh, just be careful of this, because that is your new 
um, clutch slave and uh, you don't want to break it. Like I said, it's plastic, so be real careful. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the transmission bracket, this guy, back on the bottom of the transmission and then we're going to put the transmission motor mount uh, back in. So that's what we're doing here and here. All right, so the bracket's back in and the mount is back in. Torque these, they were 14, so I torqued those to 40 pounds. The mount to the transmission were torqued to 40 pounds, and the 17 end bolt here was torqued to 50 pounds. Um, so that's that for here. Um, okay, so bracket back on for the vacuum pump, vacuum pump put back in, vacuum hose is on, vacuum plug connector is on. All right, so what I did was put the two tens back into the clutch line bracket into the frame, and I reconnected the clutch into the new sleeve and put the little pin back in, so now that's all nice and good. Next thing I'm going to do is the ground cable. I'm going to torque these uh, transmission mount bolts down before I put everything else in the way, and then I will start putting the clutch linkage back on. All right, so clutch or transmission linkage bracket is back in and bolted down. Uh, this bracket is back in and bolted down. Wires are connected. Clutch cables are, or uh, transmission cables are reconnected. The cotter pins are back in. The plugs back in. This wire back here that I was, that I had disconnected is connected back on. Okay, so battery trays back in. Bolts are in. Um, positive cable is bolted back down. This is for the ECU. I just put it back here so I won't lose that screw. That one's back in. The one here in the back is in. Well, like I said, we're going to leave the ECU and the bracket out so that I can get that other clutch piece out of here. Alright, so we're starting to put the hot pipe back in. That I had an extra one of these when I ordered my uh, exhaust for my car. <coughs> this is that... Uh, baffle delete or heat sink tube whatever you want to call it since i already have it out i'm going to go ahead and swap it it doesn't really do anything um some people say it causes heat soak in the turbo it's kind of hard to do this is a rubber hose on the opposite side and it's a rubber hose on the bottom so having heat soak it's kind of difficult but you know experts say whatever so all right so, clamp is tightened again, clamp is on, clamp is on, and the two bolts for the hot pipe are tight. I am cleaning this other piece of rubber hose. I found there was some oil in it, and there is a little bit of oil in the bottom of the intercooler, so I'm going to try to soak up as much as I can. Um, and then I'm going to disconnect the upper and run some carburetor, or uh, brake clean through that and just let it dump out on the ground. Well, in my dump bucket, not on the ground, but in my dump bucket. And that should free up anything that's left inside the intercooler. So, that's that. So, next is putting the axle shafts back in. All right, so, hot pipe is in. I've cleaned this tube. I've flushed through the intercooler from the top down. So anything that was in there washed out. The other thing I just did was put the drain plug with a new crush washer in. So I got a little oil from that. Here's the old one. Um, so that's torqued. Um, so I haven't done the fill one because I haven't put fluid in it yet. So I got the washer in the house. Okay, so driver's side axle is in. When you go to put it in, um, that keeper is going to keep it from sliding all the way in. So what you do is, when you slide it in, pull it back just a little bit and give it a good, quick, sharp push in, and it will click back into place. Um, sway bar link is reinstalled and tightened and torqued. Lower ball joint is tightened and torqued. Well, not really torqued. Tightened down as tight as you can because I don't have a tool that can actually torque inside there. 
um, and the tie rod end is back on so the only thing left on this side I need to do is to put the uh, wheel sensor back in and I'll do that real quick.